Good evening, everybody. I know you can't see me. I'm Bill Pitcher, the music director here. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you. Mass is actually going to start in the courtyard with the blessing of the Easter fire. So at this time, I would invite you to stand up and just face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most holy night, on which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her children, scattered throughout the world, to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's paschal solemnity in this manner, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him forever in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today and the end and Omega. All time belongs to him. the ages be glory through every age. Amen. By his wounds, holy and glorious, may Christ guard and preserve us through Christ our Lord. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ.
the light of Christ. So Be glad. 
is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lord, the one true love, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know Nice. 
light of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering. The work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wet to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the you all now to please extinguish your candles. I'd ask you also to please be seated. <laughs> Dear sisters and brothers, now we have begun our solemn vigil. Let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good it was. God then separated the light from the darkness God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, 
and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on the earth that bears the fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed time, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. And God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant over all the earth, and every tree has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made. He found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work that he was doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord.
majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. Holy Spirit, come renew us. You founded the earth in its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The stood higher than the mountains. Holy Spirit, come renew us. You make the springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. On their banks dwell the birds of They sing their song. Holy Spirit, come renew us. From your dwelling, your water the hills, earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve man's needs. Holy Spirit, come renew us. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord my soul. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ is our Passover who has been sacrificed and who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horn in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. 
Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Destiny, O oh Lord, is my delight. 
Let us pray. Lord God, Supreme Father of all the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who, through the Paschal Mystery, make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Grant this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and wing hand outstretched over the sea. Split the sea. Egyptians followed in pursuit of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch 
hatch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And so he clogged the chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptian sounded retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory.
Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and their deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispensing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by their statutes careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Oh, dear. 
Let us pray. Lord God, who by the pages of both testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope in the gifts that are yet to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. this most sacred night 
radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in mind and body we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary of Magdala, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles. But their story seemed like nonsense and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He bent down and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. From that which was formless, and at least to the human mind, a wasteland, God created. Not wasteland, but rather wasteless, filled with potential. All because God first created light. And even in the darkness, there would always be light. Light created time. Light enabled us to experience the distinctions of creation. Light created even life itself. And wherever the light touched, God said it was good. For even in the beginning, the light of the world was in God, and God's light was in all that he created. 
we are all people who seek to live in the light, both practically and metaphorically. Light is necessary for our health. Illumination is essential for our holiness. We are a people who need light. Light changes our moods and our attitudes. And for those of us who are Floridians, who know that a rainy day can last two or three days, this place called Florida, named after Easter flowers, isn't much of paradise with God's people. Moods change everything. And so we come to this night in the darkness that still has much light that God has shed upon it. A Passover night with our Jewish brothers and sisters, children of Abraham, remembering our ancestry and our family ties with them our family ties with one another, with all its ups and downs, gathered together, not only to recall the great events of our salvation in both testaments, old and new, but to praise the God who created the light and the Son of God, who is the world's true and eternal light. And with a pillar of fire, which led the Israelites of old, this evening we too followed a candle, a Paschal candle, an Easter candle, the one true symbol and sign of the resurrection. It is a symbol too of both the Hebrew and the Christian Passovers ever joined together as one. Five feet tall on a five-foot stand, 50 pounds of pure bleached beeswax. Thank you, Matt, for carrying that candle. And the design of it tells the story of God creating the light. And the candle's name is Genesis. I hope that you will take the opportunity before you leave this evening to take a closer look at our Easter candle which brings us back to the very first day of creation. And this, the very first day of God's new creation. Just a few moments ago, well, maybe more than a few, more like an hour and 10 minutes ago, we kindled a fire and blessed this candle, the work of honeybees and of servants' hands. A burning fire fed by melting wax drawn out by mother bees to be a self-consuming torch. We sang as it entered the church we sang to the candle, and we sang of the candle, that its light might mingle with all the lights of 
the other Ann Easter candles lit this evening in all of the other parishes throughout the world, starting hours ago and continuing, but it is still one candle, though many. One candle for the church, one torch that reminds us of the resurrection. Praying together that once lit, it would mingle with every Christian community that lights an Easter candle this evening and mingle with the lights of heaven so that all creation might know of the resurrection of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we pray that it be found burning through the darkness of this and every night, its flame captured in our hearts, providing us energy to do the work. But this candle, the work of honeybees and of servants' hands, in the coming year will shed its light, consume itself, and offer its honey fragrance in every church in which it burns during these 50 days of Easter. Yes, it's beeswax. Of course it smells like honey when it burns, right? Of course it smells like honey. The church is so wise in telling us exactly what the material for the candle is to be and who is to make it. The work of mother bees and of the servants' hands. And this candle will increase the faith of many, bringing new order to the chaos that ultimately tries to enter into our own lives when we sometimes stray from our relationship with God. Consider this, then, that this one candle, which has been lit throughout the world from the one new fire in its natural origin, origins, has been made holy to shed its light on every baptism and every funeral that will take place place in the coming year. It will shed hope. It will bring illumination. It will remind us in the most joyful moments and in the most difficult moments that Christ our Lord is there. For he is the God of the living and of the dead who brings us back to eternal life. But finally, maybe this is the practical thing that we might take with us this evening. Some words of St. John Chrysostom, an early father of the church who lived in the second century, who reflected, I thought when I read it, perhaps more pompously and maybe even a little bit uselessly. But that's what youngsters sometimes think when they hear words of wisdom from older people, right? He said, and reminded us of the importance of the honeybee who has provided the wax which glows. And by the way, did you notice it in the dark that the wax was glowing too? 
That's another reason why we use beeswax. It's a paradigm for our lives. To glow and provide fragrance, to provide nourishment and joy. And Chrysostom said this, the honeybee is the most honored than any of the animals. Not because she labors, but because she labors for others. Because she labors for others. I used to be afraid of bees of any sort. God only knows there are some bees that are very destructive and very aggressive, right? But not the honeybee. Only if you attempt to harm it will it protect itself. The honeybee, which fertilizes the earth, which brings about flowers, which brings about crops and nourishment for everyone else and for every living being. She labors not for herself, but she labors for others. Chrysostom was right. The honeybee, perhaps more than anything else beside the candle, which is the fruit of her life, is the most incredible symbol and sign of Easter and new life. And so on this great night of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, out of darkness, God has called us each to walk, to live, and to labor in his own marvelous light. For no, dark, no night is too dark if there's a Christian person there who glows from the inside with the light of Christ, like the candle. And no night is too difficult to bear if the Christian person smells like honey, bringing the fragrance of Christ to all the world. We then, when we see the honeybee every single day, should think of that as a gift from the Lord Jesus, reminding us of the new creation that his resurrection has brought about. In this, brothers and sisters, on this most holy night, all the world, all creatures, all people, and you and I are called to acknowledge the saving work that God has begun in us. A saving work that God began when he pronounced those wonderful words in the beginning, in the beginning, so that we might be good, that we might be good. Happy Easter, everyone.
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a reminder of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. God, our Father, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through the waters, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human family. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who this evening have been baptized into the faith of your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for life eternal. Amen.
I seem to have lost a priest. <laughs> May our Easter prayers embrace the needs of all the human family as we offer them through Christ, who intercedes for us at the Father's right hand. Fill your church, O God of glory, with the power flowing from Christ's resurrection, that we may be present in the midst of this world as the beginnings of a renewed humanity, risen to new life in Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
pray, dear brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of all eternity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And all creation rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun until its setting, a perfect sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, we humbly implore by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfading help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these families whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share with one another some sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we to be called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. nature of this Basilica ministry, communion will only be administered in the hand. Debido a la crisis de salud que este presente y la naturaleza internacional del ministerio de la Basilica, la communion solo se dará en la mano. Our communion hymn.
let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you all for joining us here this evening. I'm sorry that the service isn't any longer. <laughs> I've always aimed for the Easter vigil to take us through to dawn, but um, <laughs> sometimes we like to get a little bit of sleep, but I'm really um, glad that you all have found your way here as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection at this Easter vigil. Um, I thank you for your generosity also at collection time. This is not a parish community, but rather stands as a wonderful symbol of the heart of our ministry to those who come and visit Central Florida. And we rely solely upon the donations of those who um, worship here to keep the air conditioner on. I think it went off for a while there. Um, and to keep the lights on and, and all of those things. And uh, if the collection basket happened to miss you for any reason, I most sincerely apologize for that oversight. Um, and if you feel a little bit more compelled to, for generosity, there are boxes at the doors of the Basilica for that purpose. So feel free to open up your wallets and empty the entire contents of them inside of the wallets. Um, I want to thank those, uh, especially as we get to this, the beginning of the third day of this uh, Easter Triduum. Um, the ministers here have had quite a workout. I first and foremost, as always, thank Father Julian, who is at the heart of um, our Ministry of Reconciliation here. And he and myself and others have spent many hours in confession. He keeps on convincing me that there are a lot more sinners than I, I like to acknowledge. But, um, but he finds them, and, and he does a wonderful job here. Thank you, Father Julian. <laughs> I'm going to do this in total because uh, with, with just one. Uh, first and foremost, our music ministers under the direction of Dr. Spitzer. Well, I guess we'll do them all individually. Our readers. Our ministers of hospitality. Extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion and altar servers. And one who will be embarrassed by more of this, but, but Matt Carpenter, who, who helps to design and, and execute the environment and helps to keep things in order. Uh, Matt, most especially to you. Lastly, before we go, this is one of those Easter's like no other. It seems that we've had many of these Easter's like no other before in the past few years. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine um, in a most special, most special way. And I'm sure the faith of, of that community has them celebrating visuals in, in underground places and they're just so happy to be able to have their priests there and to be able to celebrate. And even in the midst of the carnage of war and the bombs that fly over, they are indefatigable in their faith. And we pray that God might bless them, keep, protect them, and keep them safe in the midst of this warfare. And indeed, may God's triumph be upon them so that, that peace might reign they might be restored to their homelands. For God only knows um, we can make many parallels with them right now to the Jewish people who are celebrating Passover. And so we pray most especially 
And maybe that deserves an applause for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On this solemn feast of Easter, having followed the Lord Jesus in his passion, we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May Almighty God bless you and mercifully protect you from every assault of sin. Amen. May God, who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, complete in you the gift of immortality. Amen. Through the grace of Christ, may God lead you to the feast celebrated in everlasting joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.